In a previous video, we looked at a way of implementing Boolean logic functions using simple switches. In this video, we're going to look at a better way of implementing those circuits using CMOS transistors. One of the main advantages of using CMOS transistors is that they save a lot of power. In our original designs, the inputs were switches and the output was a lamp and we could detect the truth value of the output if current was flowing through the lamp, hence making it light up. The problem with this approach is that we burn power, a lot of power, as long as the circuit is conducting. As an alternative, what if we could design a circuit where the output could take on two different values that didn't have current flowing through it and hence didn't statically burn power? To achieve this, we'll design a circuit where we can switch the output between a high and low voltage, but the circuit itself will always be open and hence there won't be a current path around it. Here's a circuit that achieves that. It consists of a battery and two complementary switches. One with a switch you push from the left to close and another that you push from the left to open. We take the output at the connection point between the two switches. Let's start by taking a look at the voltage uh, at the output. Since neither of the switches are closed, the output voltage is unknown, and since it's an open circuit, there is no current flowing through it. Now we'll push the bottom switch from the left and close it. We see that the output is connected to the negative end of the battery, or zero volts, but there's still no current flowing through the circuit because the top switch is open. Now if we close the top switch, Pushing from the right, the output goes to 5 volts, but still no current flowing through the circuit because the bottom switch is open. If we close both, we've shorted out the battery and our circuit bursts into flames. So this isn't a healthy situation with overcurrent. So one of the rules of this system is that you need to have one switch or the other closed, but never both. We've accounted for this by using complementary switches, where pushing from the left closes the switch on the bottom, but opens the switch on the top. Before designing logic circuits with complementary switches that don't conduct current statically, we're going to switch to a different simulator. This is a free one that's also available online from falstad.com, and we'll introduce some schematic notation. The circuit on the left is uh, your basic circuit that has a battery. This is the symbol for a battery a resistor, which is like the lamp we had before, and a switch. And if we close the switch, current flows around the circuit. For digital circuits, we usually don't explicitly show the connections in a loop to both ends of the batteries. Instead, we show the uh, battery voltage as a number or sometimes as a straight line on top, and the negative or ground end of the battery using a ground symbol, symbol which is typically a uh, triangle made of dashed lines or, or sometimes just a triangle. And again, if we close the switch, we get current flowing through the circuit. Now we're ready to look at our switches. These aren't mechanical switches like we used before, but electrically controlled switches called transistors. There are two types, a negative metal oxide semiconductor switch or NMOS switch and a positive metal oxide semiconductor switch uh, called PMOS. Together, these make up complementary metal oxide semiconductor switches, or CMOS. CMOS transistors have three terminals called the gate, the source, and the drain. The gate is the terminal that we use to turn the switch on or off. The source is the terminal that's connected to the source of the carriers, which for the NMOS device is where the electrons are, which is ground. The other end uh, is the drain. For the PMOS transistor, we see that the source is connected to the source of the uh, positive carriers, which is the, uh, the positive 5 volt end of the battery, and the, the drain is the other end where those carriers will flow. Note that we can distinguish the symbol for a PMOS transistor from an NMOS transistor by the little circle or bubble on the gate of the PMOS transistor. NMOS transistors turn on when we apply a high voltage to the gate. Here we see initially there's a low voltage applied to the gate, but when we turn that to a high voltage, the switch closes 
and the current flows through the circuit. Conversely, PMOS transistors are normally open when there's a high voltage applied to the gate, but if we switch the gate voltage from high to low, the PMOS transistor closes and current flows, hence these two devices are complementary in their operation. Now we're ready to look at our first CMOS circuit implementation of a Boolean logic gate. The circuit has an input and an output and a pair of complementary CMOS transistors. There's an n-type device um, with its gate connected to the input, its drain connected to the output, and its source connected to ground. And then there's a p-type device with its gate also connected to the input, um, its drain connected to the output, and the source connected to 5 volts. So note that both of the CMOS transistors share common uh, inputs and common outputs, so their drains are connected together at the uh, output and their uh, gates are connected together at the input, uh, but their sources are connected to either end of the battery. Initially, the uh, input is high, so the p-type device is like an open switch and the n-type device is like a closed switch. So we have a conducting path through the n-type device down to ground and the input is low. If we change the input to low, what happens is, is that the n-type device is now like an open switch and the p-type device is like a closed switch. So we have a conducting path from the positive end of the battery, the high voltage, to the output, which means the output is high. So the device we have here is an inverter. If the input is low, the output is high. And conversely, if the input is high, the output is low. The really important thing to observe is because the two transistors are complementary and their inputs are connected together, you will either have the p-type device conducting or the n-type device conducting, but never both. As a result, there's never a direct conducting path between 5 volts and ground, and hence there is no static current flow through the circuit.